Welcome to the Night Club, guys. It's your host, the Night Wrencher. It's a little noisy out tonight because I've got my generator going. I've got my welder right here. I've got a party next door. And uh, it is Thanksgiving weekend, so everybody's trying to have a good time. And I'm here trying to film this video for you guys. What I'm trying to do today is actually bring to you guys about five tips that'll make you a much, much better welder than you are right now. Whether you've already been welding for a couple years or whether you're somebody that's just starting out, I'm sure these tips will tend to help the majority of people watching this video if they don't already know what it is. I want to preface this video by saying that most of these are basic common knowledge, but people don't realize how important these basics actually are when it comes to becoming a proficient welder, not necessarily a professional welder because not all of us are going to become professionals, but if you want to be at least decent or good or make it look fairly decent, you're going to want to follow these uh, to the letter essentially so we're gonna go ahead and jump right into it So we're gonna go ahead and jump to tip number one and that's going to be keep your material clean as you guys can see here I've got a piece of ex an exhaust pipe. It's full of carbon on the inside. It's got like a coating on the outside It's got dirt. It's got everything if I just go ahead and stick my brown lead on it I'm not even gonna put my mask on right now So if I just go ahead and try to strike a arc on it You guys are gonna be able to tell that I'm gonna have a little bit of a problem getting it started As you guys can see, I've already extended it out this much, but watch what happens when I do a little bit, just a little bit, to actually get a nice ground on this and see if I can actually get it to light this time. As you guys can see, I don't even have to do anything. I could just go ahead and point and shoot and it immediately starts lighting an arc. So the problem is, so in general, when you guys have dirty material or a dirty ground, what's going to happen is that you're going to cut the electrical current going from your ground or from your electrode, and you're breaking up the circuit, the connection in between them. So maybe while you're spot welding, it's doing well, but as soon as you try to run a proficient bead all the way across, all the contaminants that are in the material are going to get trapped, and they're going to interrupt your circuit, and that's going to cause an excessive amount of spatter, it's going to make your bead look a little wonky and it's going to make you think that your settings are incorrect and when in reality it's just your material that needs to be clean so the cleaner you can get your material the nicer your welds are going to come out that'll be number one number two is how you guys hold your gun some people like to hold their gun like this some people like to hold their part like this and then use their other hand like this but the method that i like to use when i'm welding it's more similar to, to like if I was playing pool and I actually like to put my hand on the work surface and put the gun on my hand and then I can apply all the force and the weight of the gun and I can maneuver it however I want to. Especially if I'm trying to weld all the way across, I can, re I can maintain my distance with my hands and then slide the whole thing across so I can go through and weld a consistent bead. The only way you guys are going to be able to weld like this though is if you're wearing a good set of gloves. They don't even have to be high-end gloves. If you guys just go to Harbor Freight or Amazon or something, you guys will be able to pick up a decent set of gloves. That'll move us on to tip number three. Tip number three is actually something that I realized pretty early on is that I like to use two different types of gloves at the same time. So this is the type of glove that the average person tends to buy. They tend to be able to pick it up anywhere, Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever. It's a really thick glove. It's really bulky. It resists a lot of heat and it's really tough. But the problem is that it's really hard to move in, especially if you're holding onto your electrode. It becomes really difficult to actually actuate the trigger uh, in a smooth motion. So what I realized is as you're welding, your dominant hand is actually behind the spark so most of the spatter comes out this way that way or it jumps over here and lands over there but by the time it lands over here it's really not causing any kind of damage the hand that actually receives the most damage would actually be your opposite hand and like i mentioned before when you're holding it like this trying to get a nice good bead this hand is receiving all of the heat and it's receiving all of the spatter so if you wear two different types of gloves, if you wear a thick glove like this on your 
opposite hand and on your dominant hand you wear a thin glove now you can actuate your welder however you need to these are a set of tick gloves and this is a set of uh, like stick welding or regular mig gloves and what you can do is you can actually hold it however you want and you won't have any kind of issues when you're welding I wasn't even looking at the weld at all because I don't have my helmet on. If you don't believe me, look, I don't have my helmet on. And look, decent weld, good penetration, as you guys can see on the opposite side. Well, you probably can't see, but I've got good penetration, I've got a decent weld, and I wasn't even looking at it, and that's because I can focus my efforts on keeping it steady and moving in one direction, and the rest is just kind of muscle memory from doing it over and over again. One thing you guys are going to notice though is that when you guys start getting better and once you guys start laying down hotter and hotter welds, the amount of spatter that comes out is very minuscule. As you guys can see, the weld that I just did right now has almost no spatter whatsoever versus something that you're just trying to get across. A lot of interruptions, a lot of problems, and you're going to get a lot of spatter. When you guys are starting out, you're going to want to use something called anti-spatter spray. So what this is, it's a special oil. I don't even think, no, you can even call it an oil. It's some sort of liquid that you spray on the surface that you're welding. So let's say right here. What this spray does, it's like an anti-sticking spray. All the spatter that would normally get stuck to the material would end up just flaking off. So I'm gonna go ahead and weld another bead. So you guys are able to see that there are no little spatter balls anywhere around here when here you're able to see a couple of them around here when you use the anti-spatter spray it does end up burning off when you start welding but the spatter actually just kind of falls off especially if you just take a brush you go through it with the brush everything just basically falls off wherever you weren't welding one thing that you do want to take note of is after you're done welding you're going to want to take this oil off because it dries and it leaves some kind of film on it which isn't necessarily a problem, but if you're planning to paint it, you really want to take that stuff off. Anti-spatter spray is also really good for when you're trying to fit two pieces of metal together and you don't want them to rust, but you also can't paint them because you're going to uh, weld over them. So you can actually sp spray them with anti-spatter spray. You can use that as a lubricant and when it, you're fitting that inside the other material, it's already taken off enough resistance so that the material goes all the way in and then you can just weld around it and you won't have any problems with paint or porosity or any kind of problems like that, no rust, everything is locked in because of the anti-spatter spray. And the last tip I'm gonna share with you guys is actually pertaining to the material that you're using to weld and that would be the wire. So typically, a lot of machines come factory with 035 wire when you're welding with flux core. The best welding wire that I've been able to find that welds the nicest has been 030 in terms of size. And my personal favorite is actually the Lincoln wire. I've used a Harbor Freight wire and I don't really like the way it flows. And I've used a couple other ones, but some people have their preferences. I like the Lincoln Inner Shield wire. Uh, people can pick whatever they want. There's not a big difference between 030 and 035, and I don't know what it is in millimeters, but when you go and switch to the thinner wire, what will happen is you're gonna realize you're gonna need less heat to get your solid wire into a liquid state, and you're going to be able to weld a lot easier. You're gonna be able to start your welds easier, you're gonna be able to shape your welds easier, and everything's gonna come out really, really nice. One big plus with using a thinner wire is if you're welding sheet metal or exhaust or very thin metals, because you're using a thinner wire and it takes less heat to get it started, you're gonna be putting less heat in the material and that's going to allow the material to retain its shape better. You're gonna prevent welding through. And one of the most significant changes that I found when I was welding was actually switching to that 030 wire. So that has been five tips for you guys. Those five things actually changed the world for me and change the way I weld and change the way I fabricate things. So take those five things, make sure you're doing those to the letter, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher, out.